You bet. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, just starting with our recap from VMI, and um, it was a great day in a lot of ways for the team. You know, beautiful weather, packed house, a uh, game in which we scored uh, in all three phases, scored touchdowns, and we were able to play a lot of guys on the roster. Uh, improved in a lot of areas that we were really focused on in, in that football game. You know, uh, documented how uncomplimentary we played in the Notre Dame game. And, and uh, in this game, I don't think we could have played more complimentary football. You just go through the series is starting the game with a, a touchback kick by Colin Smith. Uh, our defense goes three and out. Jalen Coit returns the punt for 26 yards. Our offense goes on a 12-play drive and scores a touchdown. Um, kick another touchback. Next series defense, pick six. And guys just really set each other up, played off of each other, and uh, it was fun to watch. Um, positives on offense, you know, we had four uh, drives over 12 plays and a 17-play drive, and it's hard to sustain drives like that. You know, we played a team that really um, played bend but don't break style defense, um, which wasn't what they showed prior to our game but forced us to, you know, play pitch and catch in front of them to run the football. And you have to be able to obviously catch balls, you know, run after the catch um, and, and block things and get your, your running backs, you know, efficient runs, which we were able to do. And then you can't have pre-snap penalties and, and holding penalties and things that then move you back. Uh, so I thought our guys did a great job of that. We were very physical in the game. Um we finished blocks, runs, and catches, which was one of our goals in that game. We had 24 pancakes, and uh, out of all the balls thrown in the game, there was two drops, both catchable balls. You know, I thought Brennan really operated well. Uh, he managed uh, the attack that he had to manage. You know, uh, going into the game prior to their two opponents, they were uh, putting a lot of guys in the box, a lot of guys on the line of scrimmage, playing a lot of cover zero uh, versus us. It was drop eight, uh, cover two, and drop eight, cover three. And so he adjusted well, you know, he used his legs when he had to, but he just delivered the ball to a lot of different people. I thought our running backs uh, rotated in and out. It was good to see, you know, Michael Allen and Kendrick Raphael get going uh, in the regular uh, part of the game, in the run game. And obviously, Delbert continues to be a force in short yardage and goal line for us. But, uh, you know, one of the probably the biggest things that maybe people didn't notice, but I did, you know, Lyndon Cooper came in and played center um, after the first series for the entire game until the end and thought he did a tremendous job, was our player of the game on offense, graded out at 99% in his first real game playing that much at that position. Uh, Jacarius Peaks really helped our run game as well. Uh, guy that we look at as uh, one of our future starters, um, has, has moved and played some tight ends, also playing some tackle and is really playing at a high level. Very physical on the edge. But, uh, you know, negatives on offense. We gave up a sack, uh, one that we shouldn't have given up. You know, we did have the two drops. You know, on defense, you know, uh, scoring a touchdown, Robert Kennedy, that was a great play. He also had a nice sack on a blitz later in the game. Thought we played really well on third down. Um, throughout the game, our D-line continued to improve. I thought there was a lot of guys uh, – Involved in that one on the defensive front, got a lot of knockback and did a good job setting setting edges and containing things. You know, the linebackers, a bunch of guys got in and played and all of them played well. You know, the negatives, you know, I think we had four penalties on defense. Uh, one was an offsides by Trevally that ended up negating an interception by Bishop Fitzgerald. So that was disappointing. Um, we had two DPIs. So those will be good teachable moments for Brandon Cisse. You know, and, and then the explosive pass that we gave up, we had poor eyes uh, on on a deep ball, and something we've got to work really hard on. I know Torrente will improve from that play. We had one run that we misfit that ended up being an explosive run. So, you know, some things we definitely can, can continue to get better at and work on defensively. You know, I thought our special teams, obviously the return game has been very good for us. Julian had two great returns. Jalen Coit uh, continues to average. 10 yards per return, uh, had a great pin punt um, by Caden and, and Bradley Rosner did a tremendous job down in it inside the 10 and and then Braden um, made his only field goal attempt and it was great to get Kanoa uh, in at the end to, to make an extra point, his first points um, 
we had two special teams penalties, both technique oriented that we have to work on uh, and now move on to conference play and, and our first road conference game on a short week against Virginia uh, on Friday night. And, um, you know, for us to continue to, to improve and focus on the details of our play. And I think that's really the biggest thing. Um, there's a lot of ways you win and lose football games. I think execution is all about details and the fundamentals that come with being a better player each week. And, and that's really a good recipe for our football team. You know, watching UVA, uh, Coach Elliott's done a good job there. You can see they're playing spirited football. Uh, they're playing hard. They have really good skill in that running back room and, and uh, at receiver, you know, number eight, number four, making plays for them. Their defense up front is their strength on defense. Uh, those guys have played a lot for them. Their two defensive tackles are good football players. Number 90, really like watching him play. You know, if you watch last year and this year, that front's almost identical with the exception of the, the linebacker number six being gone. So those guys have played a lot of football and uh, they played well in some games defensively last year. I know they played against Coach and I last year when he was at Syracuse. Um, all games in this league, you know, regardless of where people are in the standings are games you got to really play well in. You know, these are important games to these kids. They're, they're players that know each other through recruiting. Every team's well coached. Uh, every team has talented guys. And these games mean a lot, you know. And so regardless of, you know, you saw it last week, uh, Florida State and Boston College, it doesn't matter. You got to show up and you got to play extremely, extremely, extremely hard, extremely well. You know that every game is up for grabs in this league. You know, that's the one thing I know being in this conference now for my 11th year, uh, every single game is a one possession game in this league. There's a lot of them. And I'm excited, you know, to get into this week and to uh, go up against the staff. I haven't had a chance to coach against Coach Elliott as a head coach and have great respect for him. And, um, uh, I know our players look forward to playing against them. It'll be a, a great contest and, you know, be a great opportunity to play on national television as well. Questions? Daniel? Good evening, Coach. Um, like you said, you're in your 11th year here in Raleigh. Uh, one guy who spent eight years on your staff was, of course, Des Kitchings. Just wanted to ask you about uh, your relationship with him and how it's going to be uh, seeing him on the opposite sideline. You know, you coach against a lot of guys um, in this profession, some guys that you're friends with, some guys that you've worked with, uh, guys you meet on the road. And when you start these games, it doesn't matter. I mean, you don't even know they're over there. You're worried about your own football team, and that's just how it is. Um, so it's really nothing different. I mean, every game you go, if you really watch the coaches in pregame, a lot of them are close friends. You see them out there catching up and things like that. So just another game. Corey? Dave, obviously, um, you mentioned the play of Lyndon Cooper. Uh, that was because of the fact that Dylan McMahon had to leave the game. What is his status right now? And and obviously, Aiden White sitting out the last game. I know you said that it sounded like it was kind of minor, but where what are their status for this week at this point? Yeah, well, we expect to have Aiden White and uh, Dylan's day-to-day. -day, you know, there's nothing on the – tests after the game that are worrisome, no surgeries, nothing like that. Dylan has had things in the past. He's a very quick healer, very tough guy. So he's going to do everything he can to play in this game. But, you know, we're two days from that game. So we'll have to see where he's at tomorrow. But I know he'll do everything he can to be out there. And as a follow-up to that, with the way Lyndon Cooper played, does that give you confidence that regardless you feel pretty good about the center position as well? Yeah, we're excited about Coop. You know, I was last year when he started getting reps um, behind Gibby, you know. And so, you know, we've known for a while that, you know, we've kind of set ourselves up progression-wise with the guys we have. And you know, I think putting Coop at guard allowed him to to get playing and, and not have to worry about the snaps and all that. And he's improved a lot. So we feel great with him in there. He understands the system and what to do with it. And there's great confidence if he's the guy we have to roll with. Thanks, Dave. Aaron. 
Hey, Dave, uh, you guys had, I think, 10 different guys catch a ball last week. Receiver has been sort of a topic of, you know, can you find that guy or develop that guy, the next go-to guy that you can trust reliably every game? Kind of, did you feel like you guys accomplished some things in that regard with the last game with guys getting more reps and extended looks? Yeah, it's growing. Like I told you guys last week, I think the offense is going to continue to evolve with Coach and I, you know, maybe through the first half of the season, you know, and I think it's just as guys continue to make plays or sometimes guys will make some errors and then do they recover from them? Like in this past game, I think Casey and Porter both played well, you know, in the game before they both had drops that hurt us and you saw them gain confidence and, and get back into the flow of things that way. And I think Bradley Rosner has become a consistent playmaker. Keon's been consistent. Julian Gray's playing really good for us right now. And so, you know, it's starting to come together, but it's not there yet, you know, and we're still bringing some guys along. I think Terrell Timmons and Anthony Smith are two guys in our system that could emerge over time too, you know. So, as you know, it's a long year, man. A lot of things can happen, and where we're at in week two or week three is not where we're going to be in week 10. Ethan? Hey, Coach. Obviously, Sean Brown had to step into a starting role right. in the last game. Just how would you assess his play against VMI? He's getting better. You know, I thought he was more active. He was more productive. Uh, his eyes were better. Uh, he played faster. And I think um, being a starter for the first time, you know, in the last week, and now it's something he's more comfortable, I think, just, you know, being in that role. But he improved from – the last one to this one and obviously competition wasn't the same I get that but just the little things about his play uh the volume the, the level of communication the eye discipline those were all better thanks Noah hey coach you kind of mentioned it in your opening statement but Kendrick got a lot of run at, at running back what'd you kind of see from him in his first opportunity you know to really get a lot of carries well, he's a natural guy when it comes to seeing things on the field. He's got really good balance and vision. Um, I, mean, I, saw, I talked about him a lot during training camp, you know, that he was impressing us as a runner. And so, as you know, that's not the only thing running backs have to do. You have to understand the protections to take care of the quarterback. And as a freshman, that takes a little time. And, and so the one part of his game is, is, as you've seen, he's pretty good at running the football. He can see things. He's got balance. He's strong. And it's just continuing to get him game ready in all the other areas, you know, improving his ball skills, improving his protections. And we also want to keep these guys fresh. So it's good to have that rotation back there between Jordan and Michael and him and then using Delbert and, and DeMarcus in the way that we are. You know, I think it's nice to have that to sustain what we want to do in the run game over a 12-week season. Corey? Dave, obviously this is going to be an emotional game for Brennan Armstrong returning to UVA for the first time. What do you do as a as a coach to to keep him on track, you know, leading up to the game and during the game to keep his head, you know, in things? Obviously, he's a veteran quarterback, doesn't need that much. So right. Well, you focus on the process, right? And, and I think for him, I've gotten to know him now. He's regardless of who he's playing, that kid is uber competitive. And so he's going to be that way no matter what. And, and I think it's just getting him to understand the process, which he does already. We've talked a lot about this, the process of what makes him a good player. Like, what do you need to do to see the coverages the right way to understand the timing of the plays, you know, your, your progression in uh, the meeting room with the coaches, how you're talking to the players, the way you practice. It's just a game. Once that – whistle blows now when he gets in that stadium for the first time I'm sure he's going to have some feelings he loved that place has great friends and memories there but he's playing for our team and he knows that and he's going in there to win a football game and to make it about us you know and how he has to play and that's kind of where it is so I think you can get into these types of games and you guys are asking all the questions about the things that don't matter you know it doesn't matter that he used to go to school there it doesn't matter that we have coaches that used to coach there. Or they have coaches that used to coach here. What matters is, can we execute? Can we win the ball security battle? You know, can we strain harder than them? Can we finish plays better than them? That's what matters. And we want to go win a football game. So we're going to focus on the things that matter. JC? 
obviously different teams go through rebuilding stages. Can you tell the difference when they have the true freshman at quarterback that maybe he gives them a spark that they can build around moving forward? The kid's got a lot of guts. You know, you see him go in there and he, he, there's no flinch. He plays hard. Uh, he's definitely energetic. You can see his enthusiasm with his teammates. Um, and then the other guy, you know, when he was in the game against Tennessee prior to the injury, he's got a quick release. He threw some really nice dig routes in that game uh, into tight windows. And you can see he's got a talented arm. Uh, he didn't run a whole lot in that game, so you didn't really see that part of it. But they've got two good quarterbacks. You know, I, I'm not sure. Obviously, it's Tony's team. He's going to do what he knows is best for those guys. But you can see why they're excited about not just the older guy that's there, but the younger guy. You know, I think they're both guys that – can help their offense and have proven that, you know, when they go in the game that they have the talent. I don't see any other hands up. Does anybody have anything else? Thank you guys. Have a great night. Coach. Thanks everybody. Thanks coach. Thanks Anna.